some point, you gotta be prideful enough to say, hey, like, I'm not gonna allow this to happen to me. Like, I just feel like some people are just allowing them to keep getting smacked in the face. Like, when are you gonna stand up? Yo, when you gonna stand up, Micah Parsons hey, really, said. Really, really quick. Um, have y'all ever been late for uh, pregame meeting, team meetings? Y'all ever been fine for being late for the meetings? Are you, Never in the league. Never in the league. Come on, Doug. I've been have late. you? I've been late. Before. I've been late. I've been fine. But what if you're on time? Aren't you? Are you early or are you late? Yeah. Because you said early, if you're, you're not early, you're late. You're not That's Tom Coughlin, right? Tom okay. Coughlin. Okay. I was late. always wondering about that, sir. Never been late to a meeting. Hold up. I'm not on time. Y'all never late. Not one time to a team meeting? Not in the league. Hey, could you imagine? I didn't have that luxury. I did not have that luxury. Me either. I get cut. I was undrafted. Man. I'm Thank you. I'm, hang, I'm hanging on a depth chart. Me and I'm, you feel I'm hanging. Star I'm players. hanging on a depth chart. Shady like the meeting will start till I get here. No, 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 I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm saying my whole career. You been late? I've been late. Yeah. You been, you're, uh, fine, though? I've been fine. Never, it's like uh, 10 stacks for real. Yeah, you gotta talk to hey, Coach, seriously, though. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Andy Reid too much. He don't really uh, find. Hey, look, this is a facility. It's game day. That's why we're all in our game day fits. No more important day in sports than a game day, particularly when the most valuable franchise in the world is playing. The Dallas Cowboys, they are on the fringe of losing their season tonight. They're one and two. They're facing one of the worst teams in football, the New York Giants. But the Giants are coming off one of the best wins in the franchise's history under Daniel Jones. So, James Jones, let's get to it. Mm -hmm. Is this Cowboys season over? Is the season over with the loss tonight? Absolutely. The this, this, this season will be over with the loss tonight. Um, and strictly because you lose to the New York Giants, who Dak Prescott is 12-0 against, and you lose to the New York Giants. All, whatever you want to call it, the air is out of the building in there. Right? It ain't even going to be fun coming to work no more. You ain't going to have no energy coming to work no more. You're looking at being one and three. You'll be looking up at the Philadelphia Eagles, and they possibly could be three and one. Right? You could be looking up at the New York Giants that you just lost to. You could be looking up at the Washington Commanders. You could be last <laughs> in this bottom. division with no confidence. Because in my humble opinion, the only way the Giants win this game is if they run the ball like the last two teams did to the Dallas Cowboys the last two weeks. And if they do that, you're not going to have any confidence coming into this building. You're not going to want to come to work. You're going to be mad at your brother. You hear my interview? He already mad yeah. and upset. He already calling people out, the effort, the energy. They just like getting slapped in the mouth and slapped around and all that. So imagine losing one more to a team that we didn't expect to do nothing. This is a must win for the Dallas Cowboys. The season is over. over. You think, you think, like, the season... Over. over. You think the season is over in a standpoint of, like, that locker room, or it's the season, actually, like, no chance the, at all The season the is over from any standpoint you want to go to, Chase. From the locker room, mm. from the coaches. Mm. You always talk about Mike McCarthy. You start yeah. one and three, it's going to be hard for you to keep your job as a head coach. Mm. You start one and three with what we watching with our own two eyes, the Dallas Cowboys play football right now, we're not confidently walking in there saying... Oh, they gonna go on a 10-game win streak after they lose to the We're not saying that. I'm the so confidence is out that. of the building. So for me, if they lose this game and right. they do not get their confidence back, the season's over, so, man. So uh, I, I think the season... And I love Coach Mike. Yeah, yeah you're a big, I big do. coach guy. I, I think the season will be over from a locker room standpoint. I don't think necessarily from a playoff standpoint at all because we won 10 in a row back in 2015 after the Chiefs and Andy Reid and I started 1-5. in five. You come into that locker room and you're thinking... Hey, man, we're one in five. Like, it's Andy's second year. We didn't make the playoffs last year. How do you get a locker room of guys that are sort of divided, right? Like, it's like, oh, is Alex Smith the answer? Oh, Jamal Charles fumbles. Oh, Eric Berry does this. The one guy we had in that locker room uh -huh. that kept us together, you know who it was? The head coach. Yeah. I don't know if Mike McCarthy is able to do that if he's lost the locker room after this because you see Micah Parsons talking it's a locker room full of alphas mm -hmm. and so I don't I just don't know at the end of the day if it comes down to coaching and then they didn't sign anyone in the offseason guys like they spent 18 million dollars in free agency the Chargers which were 31st in spending spent 60. Why does that matter why are you bringing that up? Because the running back room specifically guys what are we doing you, you you're putting so much pressure on Dak Prescott to go out there and deliver. You know how hard it is to do that as a quarterback when you're asked to throw the ball can 45 I, can times I, can I stop in a game? Quick? Can I stop you yeah. real quick before you take? Because you might want to switch your take. <laughs> uh, so if they lose to the Giants, they're one and three. Yep. All right? Then they play the Steelers, the Lions, and the Niners. Yes. Yep. That's rough. So what's going to come out of that? Yes. 
You got no confidence getting beat up by a New York Giants team with Daniel Jones that we did not expect to go far. And then you have those games. Yeah. It's a one game at a time season, baby. <laughs> For a time. It's interesting because Shady said before the season, and I thought he was being hyperbolic. I thought he was kidding. I thought he was making way too much. I thought he was just doing too much. He said, I don't know if the Cowboys are going to win eight games, nine games mm. this year. And if they go one and three, and you look at the schedule that James mm. Jones just showed. You said that? Shady McCoy you said, said that. that. And you see the Steelers, then you see the Lions, and then you see the Niners. Shady might be looking and is looking more right and right every single day. Shady is a Cowboy season over with the loss. I want to be optimistic here, guys. All right? And, and I'm going to say no. It wouldn't mm -hmm. be over. I've seen teams that start out really, really hot last year, Jaguars. Mm -hmm. and what did they do? They were 8-3, and three, lost it down the stretch. You see what I'm saying? So we see this happen over and over again. We're not even 25% through the season yeah. yet. And we're talking about it's already over. If, if they go 1-3, and three, okay. Mm -hmm. You got so many other games to get things right. This would be their first game in the division. You play the, the Giants again, you play Washington, and you play Philadelphia twice a year. Mm -hmm. So you still have chances to, to get this thing going, but they got to get it going now, right? I do think they lose tonight, right? Ain't that right, James Jones? You got a bet. I think they lose tonight. <laughs> What's the bet? And, uh, and I just feel like if, if we talk about the Cowboys and they got an all-pro, elite-caliber wide receiver yep. in C.D. Lamb, there are a lot of good guys on defense. Michael Parsons is talking about it right now. He's the top five type of talent in this league. Yep. But the biggest problem, Austin said the biggest, biggest answer should be the highest paid quarterback. The highest paid, payer, uh, the highest paid player in the game. Dak Prescott. Yeah. We watched Josh Allen, right? He ain't making that type of money. And his team ain't that really, really that good. You started off but, positive. But, let's, let's stay but, no, 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 but I'm saying, we, we, <laughs> we see him carry the load. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even see Dak carry this load. We'll, we'll get there. I think the season is over with the loss tonight because of what Chase said and more, because of what Shady said and more, because of what James said and more. The Cowboys haven't had a litmus test this year, so we actually don't know how good or bad the Cowboys are in totality. True. Why? Because we don't know how good the Saints are or are not in totality. Saints beat the brakes off the Cowboys, yeah. had an explosive offense, then the Eagles made the Saints look like a high school offense. Yeah. We don't know how good the Ravens are or are not yet in totality. The Ravens lose to the Raiders. We really don't know how good the Raiders are or are not. Then the Ravens beat the brakes off of the Cowboys. We don't know how good the Cowboys are because we don't know how good the Browns are. That's who the Cowboys beat week one. So we actually don't know how good the Cowboys are because we don't yet know how good their opponents are. We're not even a quarter of the way through the season. But we know this much, James, Chase, Shady, viewers at home. Here's what we know. We know the gap between the Cowboys and the Giants is seismic because Dak Prescott has won 12 consecutive games versus the New York Giants. So though we don't Man, know where the Saints or the Ravens or the Browns, the Cowboys' previous opponents lie, we do know Daniel Jones is 0-6 versus Dak Prescott, and Dak Prescott is 12-0 versus the Giants. So we know the gap between those two. When those two face off, it will tell us exactly how far the Cowboys have fallen. If the Cowboys lose to the Giants, we now know the Cowboys are one of the worst teams in football because what we do know is the Giants are not one of the best teams in football. So I believe tonight, more than any other game the Cowboys have played thus far this season, James, will tell us a ton about the Cowboys because we don't know about the Saints. We don't know about the Ravens. We don't know about the Browns. But we know the Cowboys own the Giants, and yeah. if they lose that ownership, they lose everything. Yeah, and that's, that's a lot of good points. But um, it is early in the season, and we don't know. But one thing we do know is the Dallas Cowboys stink on defense. Mm -hmm. They cannot stop the run on defense. Yes, sir. And we've seen that the last two weeks. And it ain't been a lot of crazy designs. It ain't been none of that. It's been Smash run downhill down. at you, and let's see if you can get off blocks, and let's see if you can tackle. And for the last two weeks, they have not done that, right? The Giants can run the football. The Giants do a decent job of running the football, getting this ball out of Daniel Jones' hands, and they have a really good receiver in Malik Neighbor. So they must stop the run, because that's what we do know. After these little weeks, we do know they cannot stop the run. And if you cannot stop the run in the National Football League, we all know what that equals, and that equals losses. Yeah. So I was uh, talking about Mike McCarthy right the first go-around when I, when I gave my answer, just because I'm not sure where he stands in yeah, terms gonna, of with the team. You're going to have to ease up on Mike. No, no, no. no, this, <laughs> this, this is why I get, no, no, this is why I get here, because I, I think it's good. Like, we're, we are in the pregame meeting. Yes, the sir. Dallas Cowboys, probably in about a few hours, because they're playing tonight, they're going to have... A pregame pre meeting. meeting. What do you think Mike McCarthy's message to the Dallas Cowboys should be, knowing that they're one and two, knowing that they could start one and three? Because you've been with Mike mm -hmm. McCarthy. What is he saying in that room right now? Um, if we don't win, it's going to be some changes. That's he's what saying he's saying, because that's what he used to tell us. So he's Ooh. factual. He used to tell us in Green Bay, the standard is the standard, dog. You don't win, people lose their jobs. 
That's what they're looking at right now, right? And the people that can lose their jobs is who, Chase? <laughs> The coach. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so the pregame, the pregame so, so speech. You, you hey man, like, like, because I've been with the reason I ask is I think it's 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 fun to take the viewers inside these pregame meetings because I've been with Andy Reid, I've been with uh, Doug Peterson, I've been with Sean Payton. Andy Reid keeps it short and sweet, mm -hmm. and no matter what happens the game before, if you're on a three-game losing streak, if you're on a five-game win streak, he's always the same. He says, "Hey, just be yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't do too much." Do you find a situation shady? that they could be pressing. The Dallas Cowboys are trying to do too much. It's, it, it's got to come to a point where Mike McCarthy says, just relax. Just go out there and trust yourself and play. Mm. Mm. I think he's got to be fundamentally sound.